Hello, welcome to Ben Recap. Today I'm going to explain the first episode of Marvel's Moon Knight. Watch out for spoilers and take care. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. The premiere episode opens not on Oscar Isaac but rather Ethan Hawke, playing Arthur Harrow. We see him at a desk. He grabs a glass of water, fills it, and then smashes the glass with his large metal cane. Once the glass is smashed, he grabs his shoes, leather man sandals, and pushes the shards of glass into the sandals. Then he puts his feet in the sandals. Harrow puts on the sandals and walks into a large, open room. Isaac wakes up as Stephen Grant, who apparently chains himself to his bed every night in his London flat. He also piles sand around his bed to see if he has gotten up and puts tape on the door. He peels off the tape, says hello to his fish Gus. He leaves his flat, gets on a bus, and promptly falls asleep on someone. When the bus stops he approaches a museum where he works. He walks in and talks to a young girl on a tour who thinks that the Egyptian artifacts are a bit boring. Grant takes a go at this young girl, describing in fairly graphic detail the mummification process. When he describes being judged on an astral plane, she asks him how he was judged, and not dead am I. He asks her rhetorically, and then, he's then called back to his job. He's not an archaeologist or a curator or some Egyptian scholar. He works at the gift shop. When a cute co-worker comes up and flirts with Stephen, he doesn't have any idea what she's talking about. We still on for tomorrow, she asks. He says yes but hasn't a clue. When he leaves work he goes to the park and eats a sandwich next to one of those guys who paints themselves to look like a statue. Stephen pours his heart out to this guy who doesn't say a word back. It's both funny and painfully sad, speaking volumes to the isolation and confusion of Stephen's life. He walks away from the park, passing by a puddle that reflects the entire scene. Back at home, Stephen tries to stay away. After, you know, getting into bed and shackling himself. He listens to a self-help tape about clearing your mind. He does puzzles and reads books on Egyptian history. He closes his eyes. Maybe this will be the restful sleep he yearns for. When Stephen wakes up he's in grass. He gets up and it looks like the Alps. He hears a menacing voice in his subconscious. Who bellows? Get up worm. And then, surrender the body to me. Stephen finds a golden scarab in his pocket. He looks for help and instead finds a pair of goons firing automatic weapons at him. Stephen runs into a nearby village, which has the look of a typical European town. There's a large group of people standing around. Hawk's hero walks through them. They clearly respect him. Who would like to go first? He asks. A young man moves over to him. Harrow puts the alligator-headed cane on the man's wrists and looks at his own wrist, which is tattooed with scales. As he touches the young man, the scales animated, his fate is in the balance. This is the face of a good man. Harrow exclaims and lets the man go. Then an elderly woman walks up to him and he does the same thing. Harrow's scales tattoo turns red. Amit has decided, Harrow says, and he sucks the life force out of her. She crumples to the ground, dead. A couple of Harrow's goons approach and say that Stephen has gotten away. Harrow says something and all of his followers drop to their knees. But not Stephen. Oh bollocks, he says. Harrow asks for the scarab and Stephen tries to give it to him but fails. Voices talk to him and his body contorts, keeping him from handing the scarab over. Stephen blacks out for a second and wakes up covered in blood and surrounded by several dead goons. The scarab is also coated in blood. He jumps in a cupcake delivery truck and takes off. There's a very big, expensive-looking car chase, and at one point he cuts off a truck carrying timber. Finally he gets cut off by the goons, gets out of the cupcake delivery truck and some of those same logs come crashing down the side of the mountain, killing the goons. Steven goes about his usual routine but is knocked off his axis almost immediately. He notices that Gus has two fins now. He throws the fish in a blender and takes the fish to the pet store. He wants to know if the fish can grow back a fin, and then Steven is struck by the time. He's late for his date with his co-worker. He goes to the restaurant. Steven is a vegan but his alternate else apparently enjoys a good steak and she isn't there. She calls her and she tells him that I ate a steak alone two days ago. It's Sunday. He thinks it's Friday. He sheepishly orders a steak without knowing how to order a steak. Steven walks home and calls his mom. He gets home to his flat and starts eating chocolates. One falls on the floor and he notices scratch marks in the floor. This leads him to find a panel that is ajar in the ceiling. There's a loose board and he finds an old school flip phone and a key. He opens the phone and sees dozens of missed calls from someone named Layla. As he's holding the phone Layla calls. Why didn't you call me Mark? She screams. She's been texting and calling him for months. Why did you call me Mark? Stephen asks. And then he hears Mark's voice, free of British accent. 
you're going to get yourself in trouble, Mark says. The lights flicker and Stephen runs into the hallway and into the elevator. At the far end of the hallway Stephen glimpses a giant, bird skull-headed god. The creature comes towards the elevator and, but instead it's an old lady, who is wondering why the man in the lift is losing his marbles. He blacks out and wakes up on the bus. He sees the creature standing on the street. He gets out of the bus and sees that Ethan Hawke's hero was on the same bus. They've found him. Steven enters the museum and tells the security guard that there's someone who is following him. As he goes deeper into the museum, he sees Harrow and some of his goons. He motions for another security guard to escort. But the guard has the same scales tattoo that Harrow has. The security guard is one of them. Harrow starts talking about unleashing a god named Amit. If she was free, she would have stopped Hitler. Harrow says, before referencing other atrocities like the Armenian Genocide. Stephen is, to put it mildly, confused. Harrow walks up to him and puts his cane on his wrists. His tattoo starts to animate in a jittery fashion. There's chaos in you, Harrow proclaims. Stephen runs away and Harrow allows it. Later, Stephen is doing inventory. He hears a noise and is brought out into the museum proper. He sees what he thinks is a dog. But it's not. It's much, much bigger. It's a jackal-headed god. Harrow comes onto the paw. Stephen Grant of the gift shop, give me the scare app. Stephen is chased into the bathroom, which is walled with mirrors. Mark appears in the mirrors. I can save us, Mark says. The problem is that Stephen has to allow Mark to take over. Finally, with the creature just outside the door, he relents. The lights in the bathroom flicker and hieroglyphics appear on the walls, lighting up like neon signs. The episode ends with a long shot that whips around the open bathroom door and pushes in where a man in a white suit is pummeling up the jackal-headed creature. The character turns around and walks defiantly towards camera. Moon Knight is here, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like, share and subscribe to our channel. See you later.